All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be the last part, probably, of the O2ZR 800 Cross Country Edition series. So I finally got my seat in. We're gonna be going up here in a few hours, so I'm gonna bang this seat out real quick. And uh, I'm gonna show you a quick and dirty way, you know, to do it. I can't really get into super detail because I'm kind of crunched on time. So this is where we're at so far. Um, I got the tank drained already. But yeah, as you can see, this thing is pretty nasty. I mean, me and my son, Calvin, we, uh, yeah, we rode this last year and we pretty much did the whole seed in right there. So yeah, there's not much you can do about it. So uh, the first thing I did was drain the tank, like I said, and then there are two bolts on the inside here. They are 7 16 And then this is the tail light that has two 10 millimeters. I already popped those off. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull her into the garage. I'm gonna disconnect the console. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the fuel line as well. I'm gonna pull the tank off and then we're gonna start stripping the seat off of here. So we're gonna get this thing inside and go from there. Next step, you're going to go ahead and disconnect the brake light from the main harness. And then it just pulls right out through the back of the seat. <laughs> Next step, you're just going to go ahead and disconnect the fuel line. All right, so your fuel line's back here. Just going to go ahead and pop that hose clamp off, and then the fuel line should come right off. Be careful, it might uh, be fuel in there, so you just wanna account for that and make sure you got a rag down there, which is what I'm about to do before you go ahead and pull that line off. All right, so if you have any fuel left, now's a good time to go ahead and dump it into either, you know, a container that you're gonna use it, or if it's old, dump it in a thing, dump it in a uh, container like I do. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and try and dump this into this bucket here. There's not a whole lot left. All right, so what you could do now is go ahead and um, put the cap back on and then put the cap back on and if you have the means, just go ahead and plug these up. That way you're not gonna leak any fuel out when you do turn it over, if there is any extra in there. All right, so we got the seat upside down on this table here, and uh, you're gonna notice there's two screws right here, or bolts, Philip said. Um, there are two is two right here as well, and then the rest is just a bunch of staples. So um, what I do is I just take a screwdriver and I'll, you know, get it get it started, pop it out, and then I'll grab it with these pliers here. These pliers are um, they're pretty good because they have they got nice teeth on the end, so. All right, I'm gonna set you up, that's what we're gonna do.
All right, at this point, we should be able to go ahead and uh, pull the cushion and the seat cover off from the tank itself. All right, so what you'll see here, this is the retaining rod for the uh, seat cover itself. These little straps go to the the valley on the back of the seat cover and it just holds it in place. So you'll want to unbend these and pull that out. If it breaks, just get a coat hanger and stick it in there. Cut yourself a new one. You want to make sure you get all these out. This is actually a two-piece system, I believe, or it might be attached a little bit. Um, yeah, I think these might these two pieces or three pieces might be attached. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've taken one of these apart, but um, yeah, that's going to be the next step is to just go ahead and remove these staples here, and then um, you should be able to take the plastic off and then uh, get that all situated. Oh yeah, they are different pieces. I thought they were. Oh, okay. So they're supposed to be screwed together. Wanna make sure you grab your foam. That's it, old cover, go right in the garbage. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use these stainless steel bolts and nuts to go ahead and uh, fasten these back together because it looks like all the bolts are broken, so. found out when I was putting these, when I was using these to build my my mud flaps, that uh, if I didn't use lubrication on these stainless steel to stainless steel, galling would happen and they would get all messed up and seize up and strip. Those were the old ones, just gonna throw those out. 
They are junk. All right, so I get the seat cover out. And I got my wire here. Uh, this wire is the one I'm going to go ahead and put through the bottom. As you can see, it's just a piece of a coat hanger. Cut it off here and here. And then I'm going to stick it through and probably just give it a bend now, actually. It's really all you need. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and get this thing going. All right, so you can see you got your two tabs down here. Those just get poked through. You get poked through the cushion here, so. There's one side. And there's the other. Just like that. You wanna make sure you get your pads in there. Go ahead and stuff your pads in. All right, so the next step, you want to put your bracket on. All right, so when it, you want to get your staples ready. Um, I usually go with 5 16 You want to go with stainless steel because stainless steel, you're not going to have to worry about them rusting. And if you've never used one of these guns, this is a T50 style. I believe it's a... Oh, it's Arrow. Arrow Fastener Company, T50. Um, all you have to do is just push this in and down. And that slides out, take the staples, slide those in, then the retainer in behind it. Gonna go ahead and put a couple of temporaries in here. That's annoying. Sorry.
All right, so what I did is I just went around and pulled it tight and then uh, stapled it in. Probably hit and that should be okay. Yeah, it's a little tough, but you know what? Looks great when it's done. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. There's a couple of these that are kind of like sticking out. So I'm gonna go over those with like a, just a hammer, pop those all the way in. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and put the seat and tank back on the snowmobile. And then we'll go ahead and cut the hole for the trunk as well as the tail light. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you get the tank on the sled, is go ahead and slip in that main harness that goes back to the tail light through the tape. All right, so now that that's done, we can go ahead and cut the hole for the tail light. Okay, so cutting the hole for the, ta the tail light is pretty easy. You just uh, push and you can find the center and it doesn't have to be exact. You just don't want to get crazy with it. And then for the bolt holes, you can feel one there. All right, so once you get your holes cut, like I said, just go ahead and cut out your hole for your trunk. And then you want to get your washers. You want to get your washers and your nuts. And you have one wire retainer. The wire retainer goes on the right side, typically. All right, there's both of those. And you can feed your tail light harness up to the main harness. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put the fuel line back on. I can barely see it back there. For this step, you might wanna grab yourself a pair of long needle nose pliers, depending on how much fuel line you have.
All right, you can go ahead and put the vent tube back on. And with the vent tube back on, you can go ahead and slip the gas tank back in position. With the fuel tank back in position, you can go ahead and lock the rear of the tank into position with your two washers and lock nuts. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and finish reattaching the console. All right, we're back here at the console. It's pretty easy. Same way you took it off. You've got your two bolts up front and your two bolts on the back here. You want to make sure you got your center piece in as well. All right, guys, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys found some useful tips. Not like you gave a whole lot of tips, but it's pretty cut and dry as far as how you do it. I mean, you just pull the thing off, um, take whatever screws out, pull the staples out, stretch the new one back on, and restaple it. So, I mean, yeah, it's pretty cut and dry, like I said. So, but it, like I said, if you guys enjoyed the video, uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit the alert bell so you're notified of future updates of this video or this video series and more. I might have one or two more of these coming, so just stay tuned. If you guys like the video, please like the video. It always helps out on YouTube, as well as drop in, ask any questions, say hello, share with friends and family that you guys think might get a kick out of this kind of stuff. All right, guys, thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video, so take care. And God bless. Come on back.